Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis and check this out. Another new micro is in the shop and on the bench. This is the DYS Elf and this one's 83 millimeters. It is super tiny. Now I'm really excited about this one for one reason. This one is a ready to fly. It comes with an open TX style transmitter. It's compatible with FR Sky receivers. And that is super nice because any receiver that has D8R receiver protocol works on this quad. So it is running SBUS. So I'm assuming that I can use an SBUS receiver, micro receiver from another radio such as FlySky, Futaba, or possibly a Spectrum receiver on here. If I wanted to switch this out, I believe I can. Now it also comes with the 2S battery, which seems to be kind of standard right now with these brushless micros. This one is actually a 2S. I'll bring it a little bit closer here so you can see it. 2S, 25C, and 600 milliamp. It takes about 35 minutes to charge this battery, and I'm getting five minutes flight time on this. So guys that are looking for a five minute flight time on a little micro, that's better than the Tiny Whoops or the Inductrix. And the cool thing about this is you have way more power with this than you have with the Inductrix because you're running these brushless motors on here. And you also have 10 amp speed controllers on here running D shot 300 or 600, I believe. So it also has Betaflight on board already programmable and set up for your radio. You can go in there and change the switches. You can add new modes. It also has OSD on here and a beeper. So this is crazy cool from DYS. The fact that they have everything built into this one. They also have prop guards around the edges. They have this canopy protecting the camera and the VTX antenna now before this week uh, on the channel I've had quite a few cameras go out I've lost all kinds of micro cameras and I'm asking other companies to actually send me a few of them because I killed so many of them this week crashing these brushless micros now I like this one a lot because it is shrouded it has this protection over top of it and you're not likely to see this camera go out on you or go black. And once they go black, that's kind of like the sign of death for these little micro cams. They just don't work after they do that. I've tossed quite a few of them in the trash. Now on the bottom of this frame, it's actually pretty decently built. There's a few screws in the bottom here, I believe eight in total, holding this carbon fiber plate to your prop guards and to the canopy. So if you wanna take the canopy off, you just remove these inside screws right here. And if you want to take the prop guards and the canopy off, you remove the outer screws along the outside here. Now let's look at this frame a little bit closer and you can see this power right here. This is the power terminal. This is the OSD programming port right here. So you can get a little cable that connects to this an OSD programming cable and you can mess with your minimum OSD on here because it does have minimum OSD showing all your battery telemetry. If your battery gets low on here, your low voltage alarm will come on the screen and it'll also start beeping like crazy. Uh, the nicest thing about this also is it has a beeper on there because I did crash this one in the field this afternoon and in the tall grass, it's already more than ankle high out there uh, in, in mid spring. And it's, uh, it's, the grass is growing quickly. So to have a beeper on here is paramount. You most definitely need to have a beeper on these brushless micros. Now, like I said, I'm getting around five minutes flight time on this. So it's acceptable. If you decide to get this one, be sure to order a couple extra batteries. I'll try to include those below um, if they're out yet. If they're not out, I'll add it later. Just remind me on the channel and I'll try to do that for you guys. Uh, but I'm very excited that I'm able to get five minutes flight time out of this. If I fly like a maniac, uh, more like four minutes. You also have BL Heli S programmable ESCs on here, that four in one stack on the bottom. Uh, and you also have an F3 flight controller. So a lot of these little brushless micros are quite capable. They're not like the Inductrix that doesn't have beta flight on it. This one already has beta flight and you can hook up your micro USB port right here. You can program the switches on your radio. So I think for an ready to fly package, this is one of the coolest ones that I've seen come out for the ready to fly package. You don't have to build it. You don't have to go through that build video like I showed on my channel and build each individual piece of this. Just charge up the battery and you're ready to fly. So not only do you get the quad and you get the radio, you also get a DYS charger. And this is different than that little B3 Pro I'm usually showing on here. It has the power port over here. And I actually got the US version. It just plugs in like that, plug this side in the wall. 
and it charges two to three S. I don't really recommend running this quad on three S probably because it's 10 amp is kind of pushing the limits of three S. Uh, you might burn something up. So stick to this two S, it's gonna fly awesome. Now it does have two very similar cord pieces on the end here. These two JSTs are very similar, but this one is your charge and balance lead for charging your 2S, and this one is your power lead. This one plugs into the quad. So don't try to plug this one into this port right here. It won't fit. This plugs right into this port right here, this balance lead, and you get a nicely balanced battery. Uh, probably charges in about 35 minutes, so not too bad. You'll see this little light stop blinking when it's totally charged up. You'll see two solid LEDs here when it's ready to go. Ah yes, okay, now my favorite part of this RTF is the radio. It's running OpenTX. I love OpenTX because it's the native software that runs on the Tyrannus Plus radios. Uh, you've seen my Tyrannus Plus on this channel and I am very devout to FR Sky. I love it. Uh, we have four switches up top right away, power switch in the middle, little tiny computer screen. This looks like maybe a one inch display. Um, and you have a slot here for hooking up like if you wanted to have sort of a, a neck strap, you can hook that up. You have an indicator here for the LED. The on switch is right there. And you have a two position switch here for arming the quad. Down is armed and up is off. You have your mode switch right here, and this is a three position switch. So you have agility mode here, which is stabilized. You have horizon mode, which is still stabilized, but lets you do rolls. Great for advancing from uh, beginner flying to the next level. And down is acro all the way down with no stabilization whatsoever. It's a lot of intermediate to pro guys are flying that. Uh, and over here on this switch, this is special because this is your OSD switch. You can turn off those little crosshairs in the center of the screen, kind of like your uh, jet pilot heads up display. You can turn that off and on. That's kind of sweet. Now, the nicest thing about this quad over here, I'm super excited about this. This is the beeper switch. They finally added a beeper switch on an RTF micro brushless. This is awesome because all of these little brushless, micro brushless, they're so small, they're impossible to find in the field. Once you crash, and if you're wearing goggles, you didn't see where it went down, you won't find it. Now you do notice that we're in mode two. We have throttle on the left right here. This is the yaw axis. This is your pitch and your roll axis from left to right here. You also have trim switches here. And below here, this is my favorite part. This is the little tiny computer display on here. You have an enter button, you have a back button, and you have a navigation buttons on the right hand side. Now if I enter, I can go into the menus here. I can change up the monitor settings. I can reverse and change things if I want. I can do CHR map, do dill rate and expo there. There's a lot of features in here. We can also do mixing if we want to. We can mess around with the radio setup. We can choose to bind something else on it because it is compatible with the the d8r receiver protocol so you can use other micro tyrannus receivers on this one you might be able to bind another quad to this if you wanted to and that's pretty cool you can change up the key tones it can also go back to factory settings by going there and doing that so i'm going to go back and the navigation's pretty easy we can also see what versions on here by selecting enter there you're on 2.4 transmitter frequency and you see that d8r protocol there very nice and we have 1612-002 firmware on this radio now the only thing that bothers me about this one there's no usb port on it so i can't hook it up to OpenTX. it's running OpenTX software and i would love to be able to have a usb port on here somewhere um, i just don't see it so that's the only drawback about this radio but I can bind this uh, to other quads and I can fly other quads with this. So that's really nice as a new guy. So now that I have the radio on, let's go ahead and plug in the quad. I want you guys to see the LEDs here and find that battery. Just go ahead and slide it through the back. And I usually twist up my cables a little bit so they don't end up in the props. Let's put it on the other way. It just slides in and kind of locks into place. Now when I crashed, the battery did fly out. So if you bump something really hard, this battery might actually come out. That's probably gonna be one con of the design so far, but you see the LEDs are flashing there. Now when I set this down, and like I said before, this is the arm switch. If we wait for this to beep, just like that, 
that means it's ready to go. Once your quad beeps like that, you can arm it. Now I have motor stop is on right now as a default, but I would turn motor stop off so that you have props spinning once you arm. Sometimes when people have motor stop on, they accidentally hit the throttle and do that. So it can actually jump up at you off the bench or out in the field, hit yourself or somebody else. So we have solid LEDs. Once it's armed, you'll see solid LEDs under there. And I can go in here and I can change from 25 milliwatt to 200 milliwatts so very nice that they put a switchable vtx on here that means you're going to get a much further range with 200 milliwatt that is very very awesome and i have 40 channels on here and five different bands so this is also a winner for this quad now another nice feature about this quad is right now it's on a low voltage so it's beeping this is what you're going to hear at the very first stage now the next stage of low voltage is going to be and it's a constant annoying beep, uh, like a really anxiety ridden beep. So we'll go ahead and disarm it real quick so it'll stop beeping. Um, we can unplug it. The camera on here is 800 TVL and that's a really, really nice high resolution camera. It's also compatible with the popular Fat Shark goggles. It works on my Fat Shark Dominator V2s or the V3s. And if anything that's running 5.8 gigahertz video, module you can hook this up and use it on there so if you wanted to buy the cheaper ones like the furry b vr ones i'll try to put a link down below for those you guys that want like a super cheap uh great beginner fpv package this is perfect for that because this is under the 250 dollars range uh, probably around 225 out the door with something that really really is fast in the field so start out with stabilized mode and work your way up to horizon mode and then acro mode and this one really rips in acro mode it is super super fast in acro okay so i'm super excited about this because this is my new 13 inch tablet that i got from GearBest. it's just awesome because i've had a macbook pro for years and now it's probably about five years old it's a little bit heavy and the screen is not so great outside but this one i can see outside it's super bright 13 inch uh, and it's quad core so it's fast enough for me to actually game on or use it for my micro quads, watch Netflix, all of that stuff right on this tablet. It's super, super nice. And I'll try to put a link down below. Uh, I'm really excited about this, mainly because it's super thin and the battery lasts for five to six hours, uh, depending on what you're doing with it, but it doesn't take too long to charge and it plugs into all of my quads. So I have this little micro USB cable here to micro USB. I just got this off Amazon for about $3. And I'm gonna hook this up right into the back of the quad and open up Betaflight. The receiver has enough power from this cable so that I can turn on the radio as well. And I'll go ahead and plug in the battery as well, just to uh, show you that the receiver tab is all good to go. So we'll go ahead and open up Betaflight. Check this out. This is so cool that I'm able to do this now from this little tablet. Now I can check my orientations in here. It wasn't quite sitting flat, so I can calibrate the accelerometer real quick. And that's gonna be nice because it is sitting on a flat and level surface. Now I can go ahead and move forward left right and check the orientations all the orientations look great uh, so we'll get into configuration and i'll show you here that s bus is on here so scroll down to right here it's serial based receiver and we have s bus there it's going to make the screen a little bit darker so you can see that s bus is indeed on here very very nice the PID settings on here were all factory default. I'm gonna leave those the same. I might change them up a little bit, but the super rates are set to 0 0.70. Now we can go to the receiver tab here. You can see that my arm switch is on auxiliary one. My mode switch is auxiliary two, one, two, three. And my OSD switch is on auxiliary four, or excuse me, three. And beeper is on auxiliary four and you can see these are set up in the modes tab right here and this is the way i have it set up if you want to copy this for yours definitely suggest this setup because you're starting out with angle mode here on aux 2 set all of your modes to aux 2 here and that will be on this switch right here you can see it switching back and forth there as i go from angle to horizon and down to acro 
which has air mode enabled. So put air mode active, put it on aux two and make your sliders. I usually bring my sliders in a little tighter, a little bit closer to the center point where each little gold bar goes across and then acro all the way out here. So I can, once I've done that, I can save it. And this just makes it a little cleaner in here. Uh, also, I believe you don't have any errors when you do it that way. If you scroll down here, you see aux four right here and you see this beeper gold bar here, that's when it's active. So if I switch there, it turns on the beeper. You can actually slide this over a little bit as well and kind of make that just a little neater. And this bottom one here, this is for your OSD on and off. Now in the CLI, we'll go to that real quick. And I'm just going to go ahead and type in version here. Version, hit return. And let's see what version. SP Racing, February 2017 on here, 3.1.5. So fairly new version of this F3 flight controller on here, firmware. So we should be good to go. And also guys, if you want to find out all of the different commands that are already pre-programmed into your flight controller just type in dump there and it will show you all of the settings that are on your current flight controller and your quadcopter so pretty nice there that this one has beta flight already tuned and ready to go